Pacheco, your early morning shot of sports on 95.7 The Game. Come on! Oh, yes. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is the pregame show. I am your host, Joe Spadoni. And it is wet out there, folks. Please be safe. Hydroplaning coming in. Lots of puddles. Lots of people speeding. I was like, what are we doing? It's five in the morning. Let's relax. Be nice and safe on the roadways. If you're getting off work, getting on work, getting ready for school. No rush. All right. Nothing's more important than your life, people. Sorry to be so serious here at 5 in the morning, but come on. I care about you. I care about you at 888-957-9570, 888-957-9570. And man, this is the days, this is the days, these are the days that you love talking about sports. This is the kind of day that you dream about when you think about doing sports talk radio, when you think about doing you know, whatever podcast you're doing, whatever. If you love sports, you live for days like today to react to. And we got all of that to do right here on 95.7 The Game, starting right here with me, Joe Spadone on the pregame show. Let's get started. Golden State Warriors, 123 over the Phoenix Suns, 112. Man, we're going to get into that. First quarter domination. Got a little scary there, but Warriors, they hang, hang on. Final score to indicate how close that really game got. Got to down to three points at one point, but Steph Curry, Jordan Poole towards the end, Clay Thompson doing their thing to get the dub and get a much needed dub as they are going to go on to a road trip now. Three games over 500, right? That helps. Breathing room. Just, you know, you, can you get over that hump on the road? Can you start getting some more breathing room? Can you start threatening for that four seed getting a home field? Home field, home court in the first round would be lovely. Just given how this season's gone, that just feels like a one seed. If you just get home court in the first round, are you kidding me? So they have that opportunity to do. Can they steep, keep stacking W's? Clippers tomorrow. Got Hawks Friday, Grizzly Saturday, Lowly Rockets Monday, and then next Wednesday you got the Mavericks before coming back home next Friday to take on the Philadelphia 76ers. So we're going to break down that game. Not too long because... Let's put the route on the table, Daryl the Guru Johnson. <laughs> NFL just dominates. Chef's kiss. God, it's just undefeated. The storylines. Jimmy Garoppolo. He goes from San Francisco, <clears throat> excuse me, to Las Vegas. Right? How many hours did we spend at this station in the Bay Area the last, what, five years comparing Derek Carr to Jimmy Garoppolo? Well, Raider fans, if you really hated Jimmy, huh? got to root for him now. You got to root for him now. And then you got Sam Darnold, fight on, signing a one-year deal with the San Francisco 49ers. What does that mean? Hargreave, you got that beast D-tackle from Philadelphia signing with the San Francisco 49ers. You make the best team in the NFC, the NFC Conference champion of last year, the representative in the Super Bowl. You make them a little weaker. You get a little better, closing that gap even more. So, man, there is an awful lot to get to. Bye-bye, Mike McGlinchey. See you next time. He goes to Denver. So, a lot to break down along the NFL lines. And, yes, we do have to say goodbye to Jimmy Garoppolo. Hello to Sam Darnold. And a lot to break down as it pertains to the NFL. But we'll start here with the Warriors. Huge win over the Phoenix Suns. Obviously, no Kevin Durant yesterday. That was a bummer. But Steve Kerr. Talked right after the game on what he liked about the intensity from the Golden State Warriors. We've lost three straight games to Phoenix in the regular season. My thought tonight, our guys showed the intensity right out of the gates and the execution. And that was obviously the key to the game. Hold them off when they made their run. But that start was fantastic. Oh, that start was huge. That start was absolutely massive. 43 points in the first quarter and just 21 for the Phoenix Suns. It was nice to see some defense early on and obviously the elite offense of a Clay Thompson early on in that game. He was feeling it. He finished the game with 38 points, only five boards. That's when you know he's just having a shooter. He's not He's not worrying about any of the rebounds or the assists. No. Give me the ball in rhythm, in transition, night-night, and that's what the Warriors did in that first quarter. Again, scoring 43 points. My goodness. Jordan Poole. 
Yeah, he was much maligned for the first part of that game. Like, what are you doing, Jordan? You're letting these guys back in. Settle down a little bit. Settle down a little bit. Finish the game with 20 points. And listen, Steph Curry, the smack talk, it's it's the best. And people are complaining. I see a lot on Twitter. I see a lot on social media. I hate it. Can we just have some fun in sports again? Can we just have some good old-fashioned smack talk? I like let teams don't like each other. I don't want everything to be, you're my friend off the court and on the court. Like, let's take selfies mid-game. No. I need some hate in sports again. Make sports hateful again. That's what I need. And you saw a little bit of the trash talking. What was it? Steph Mouthing. This ain't 2014 no more. To CP3. Who's getting, God, he's damn near 40 years old, right? Clay, Booker, back and forth. It's just fun to see that. And this, don't get it twisted. The next time these two teams see each other, if it is in the playoffs, Kevin Durant will more than likely be back. And how juicy would that be? Kevin Durant's first time, well, we keep saying that. Kevin Durant's first time at Chase Center. Maybe it's in the playoffs, in which case, I don't think you would get a standing ovation. I think you'd probably get booed, but you never know. We're classy here in the Bay Area, I think. Steve Kerr on what he saw from the team last night against Phoenix. Oh, Steve, there you go. They're a hell of a team, and they're very physical, and I thought they took us out of our offense. Just got into us. They were the more physical team, the more aggressive team, and, and usually, just like we showed in the first quarter, the more aggressive team tends to have the ball go in the hoop and ball bounce towards them and all that stuff. So they rocked us uh, you know, on our heels in that third quarter, but I was proud of the way our guys finished the third quarter and then started the fourth. We were able to uh, to control the game from there. Absolutely. Being aggressive. Uh, something, you know, you don't often hear that the Warriors are lacking, right? You think of the Warriors in the past in this last decade. It's like, that's an aggressive team. That's a team that, you know, gets up and down the floor. They're looking for the kill shot every single time they step out on the court. But lately, this season, again, we've been ta- calling it Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. It's been a lot of Mr. Hyde, Mr. Nah, this passive, right? Hasn't really been... You know, the same old Warriors where you're just looking for them to unload in the third quarter every single time. Now at the home, and at home, they've been awesome. I mean, just look at their record. They're just 36-33 and overall, but you look at what they are able to do at uh, home compared to on the road. 29-7 and at home. 29-7. and And you just look, I saw the stat yesterday, I'm sure a lot of you did. Eight-game home winning streak. Eight-game road losing streak currently. I mean, nothing sums up the Warriors season quite like that. They are currently on an eight-game home winning streak and an eight-game road losing streak. That's hard to do, folks, especially if you're a defending champion like the Warriors are. I don't know how that happens, but it does, and it is happening right now. And the Warriors, again, will try to you know, curb that losing streak on the road tomorrow in Los Angeles at the arena formerly known as Staples Center against the Los Angeles Clippers, who they're streaking. They've won three in a row, so that'll be a fun game. Cannot wait for that one. Last time they played, and last time the Warriors beat them without Steph, it was on that homestand. I proclaimed them the team to beat in the West, and I predicted them to be the Western Conference finalists. So, let's see. Can they repeat that with Steph this time? You would think, but again, games are getting tighter and tighter down the stretch. Here's more from Steve Kerr on Clay Thompson's huge first half and what it means for him. I just think Clay's been in such a great place now for for a while, for several months. And the two early Phoenix losses, he really struggled and showed a lot of frustration. So I know it felt good for him to have that huge first half, regardless of who we were playing. But as I said, this is a division rival and a team that's beaten us three straight. So we knew how big a game it was and, and Clay knew how big it was. And he came out and set the tone. He absolutely set the tone. I mean, when you drop that many points like the Warriors did in the first quarter, it's just, and we've seen it in the past this season, the Warriors have, you know, no no lead is safe with this Golden State Warriors team. Just not. And really in today's NBA. I mean, a 20-point lead could be gone like that. 30? Eh, probably not. But 20s? Absolutely. And we saw that when the Suns came to within three points. Warriors righted the ship at the end of that third quarter to give themselves a 10-point cushion, and then the rest was history. Wasn't easy, 
Again, the Suns, for the most part, in that fourth, kind of kept that 10-point shouting distance. There's like, ah, you know, if Booker hits a couple threes here, you know, what are you going to do? They didn't, even though Devin Booker got his. He got 32. Aiden, he got his. He got 27. But other than that, Chris Paul, 11. Eh. Akogi, 11. Damian Lee, yikes. He had to get benched because Jordan Poole was cooking him. Scam Payne, nine points. Like, that's not going to get it done. Obviously, their depth is being tested now without Kevin Durant. They traded all their depth. You know, Cam Johnson, he's over in Brooklyn. Bridges, Brooklyn. So, if you're Phoenix, you're just hoping and praying you could right the ship come playoff time and you can get that home court advantage that the Warriors are trying to steal from you. They're still two up in the loss column over the Warriors, but and they do have the tie break over them. This is the Warriors' first win against them all season. And they will not see each other again until potentially the playoffs. So, listen, they're trying to figure things out without KD. That's a huge loss, but the Warriors needed to get it done. They almost lost it against a Giannis-less Bucks on Saturday. They didn't. Won it overtime. And this is a big statement win for them, I think. After just losing three in a row to a team like that. And I heard a stat yesterday. I think it was John Bloom, who's the uh, television voice of the Phoenix Suns. He was on with Willard and Dibbs yesterday. And by the way, check out all the new lineups now. 95-7 the game, starting with the morning roast. 6-10, uh, to 10, Bonte and Shasky. You got Steiny Goo, 10-2. to 2, And then you got Willard and Dibbs from 2-6. to 6, And John Bloom joined them yesterday, who is the television voice of the Phoenix Suns. And he mentioned that when Clay, Dre, and Steph start in each game in a given series, they have never been swept in a season, in a regular season. So that means the Phoenix Suns, who are 3-0 against Clay, Dre, and Steph, when they all started each game, they were going for the sweep. That's never been done during a regular season against the Golden State Warriors when all three of those guys are starting each and every game of that regular season series. The Suns were going for that last night. They didn't get it done. The Warriors still remain undefeated when it comes... Not undefeated. Unswept, I should say, in the regular season when it comes to those three guys starting each and every game. No team has ever swept them in a regular season. No Western Conference team, that is. Four times in a season. So... There you go. Kind of butchered that stat a little bit. Saved myself towards the end there. What are you going to do? 888-957-9570. 888-957-9570. Know a lot of you want to get into the NFL free agency. We'll do that in a couple minutes here because we got to say goodbye to Jimmy Garoppolo. And my goodness, we're going to miss that smile, folks. I know a lot of you aren't, but man, the guy was a content god. He was absolutely a content god, and I'm sure he's going to be the same in Viva Las Vegas for Jimmy Garoppolo from the YouTube chat. And again, we are on Twitch and YouTube. Hello. How you doing? Hit me up on Twitter at Spadoni underscore Joe. Give me a follow. Go ahead and hit me up on the Xfinity mobile text line, 888-957-9570. You could call that number as well. Call or text 888-957-9570. From Mentality on YouTube, big win, Lil Homie. It was a big win. Am I a little homie? All right. Take that as a term of endearment. Appreciate you checking in mentality. Hamza on the YouTube chat. Even more interesting, Steph, Clay, and Dre have never lost a series in the playoffs when they all start each game. Well, that's not entirely true. Uh, under Steve Kerr in the Western Conference, that is true. But when they start each and every game uh, in the Western Conference series, they have never been beaten. 888-957-9570. Here's Steve Kerr. On the defense of the Warriors, and this was after the game last night, being the success when they go on the road. So going on and starting this five-game road trip, defense is obviously a main concern. Here's what Steve Kerr had to say about it. It's got to start with the defense. If you look at the numbers, our defensive stats at home are really good. We're one of the top few teams in the entire NBA in terms of defensive rating. And then on the road, we're one of the worst. So it has to start with the defense. I always talk about how the game has to connect. Part of defense is having good offensive possessions and executing at that end. So we got to connect the game, but it has to start with the defensive mindset. Always has to start with the defensive mindset. I think people sleep on the fact, and we don't hear in the Bay, but the national media, and we do care about what they have to say, whether we like it or not. Fans do care what the big heads do, the Stephen A's, the Skips, the Shannons, the Kellermans, all those guys. People care what they have to say. The Kendricks, 
And the notion is that they are soft because they are an offense and jump shooting team. Well, no. When they were winning championships because they were playing defense. Defense still wins championships in this league, and you saw it last year when they were playing the Boston Celtics. Wiggins, Draymond, they clamped Brown and Tatum at times, especially Jason Tatum, who did not have a good final series. Why? Because the Warriors played defense. That was a huge part of it. It was a huge part of it. So, yes, to Steve Kerr's point, if they're not going to play defense on the road, they're going to continue to lose. And they got to start setting these tones in the first quarter. Because if you start getting these double-digit leads again in the first quarter, that doubt creeps back in, and then you're chasing the whole game. And especially on the road, when teams and younger players, inexperienced players, are more comfortable than they would being at Chase Center, it's imperative to fight back and fight back early. Clay Thompson, my goodness. What a night from him, folks. 14 of 23, 8 of 14 from beyond the arc, 38 freaking points. My goodness. But you know what? Clay didn't want to talk about himself. He wanted to talk about Jordan Poole. His shot making was great. I mean, Jordan has great range on his jumper. Uh, his ability to get to the rim was also great. And I would say just his poise down the stretch. Although he had a couple bad turnovers, he responded by getting to the cup, a couple uh, and one, and knocking down really big shots. That was big for Jordan Poole. Finished the game with 20, 4 of 8 from beyond the arc. He was a plus 12. And yes, a couple turnovers there, three of them, in fact. Didn't lead the team. Guess who that was? Our leader, we love him. Stephen Curry with five of them. But yeah, Jordan Poole, and I think he's just going to be the punching bag. Uh, No pun intended. I hate to use that term, folks. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be funny here. It's just no pun intended with the punching bag thing. But he has been for the fan base and from his own teammate. I'm sorry to be laughing. But to see him have the performance he had last night in a game where they needed to start building a little bit of momentum going back on the road where they have struggled so mightily. It was good to see because he struggled with being a starter, then coming off the bench, being a starter, coming off the bench. It's been tough for the kid. No doubt about it. It's been tough. So it was really nice to see him have that performance. And Steve Kerr, he also agreed. Well, I think one of the key stretches in the game was, you know, kind of mid fourth when they made a push, they had cut it to maybe seven or eight points. And I think Jordan made a three, he made, you know, a couple of great drives to the hole. He's so fast getting to the rim and he gives us that dynamic that really adds a dimension to our offense. So he just stayed with it. It was in some ways, it was a a frustrating game for him. He had some turnovers and some defensive errors, but he stayed with it. At the end of the game, he's a plus 12. And like I said, I thought that was one of the key stretches was mid fourth when he kind of went on that little run. It was. It kind of sealed the game there mid-fourth. When they, Again, it was kind of just 10 points. It was like, ah, if the Suns just make a couple shots here, it's going to get tight. Don't want that. Devin Booker, you can get hot at any time, and he was hot last night. He had a hell of a game, hell of a performance. And listen, tip your cap to guys like that, like Aiton. When they get theirs, they get theirs. But hold all those other guys to, you know, below 10 points, and good things are going to happen. That's what the Warriors did last night. We'll continue to talk about the Warriors 888-957-9570, 888-957-9570, as they are going to head on to the road. Again, they're taking on the Los Angeles Clippers tomorrow, and we will have all of that coverage right here on 95.7 The Game. But we're going to transition now to the NFL. And my God, it's it's just, again, chef's kiss. I cannot get enough of the NFL. I don't even start paying attention to real basketball most of the time, like, obviously I have to talk about him. Anyway, but my main focus is hell. It's on the NFL draft. And right now the Niners, you know, they're on first round picks. So they're not super involved in the draft. But free agency, it's like Christmas. It's like Christmas. And it's not the deepest class it's ever been when it comes to NFL free agency season. But it's fun. And we saw it yesterday. And my goodness, the San Francisco 49ers. They're making things happen. Javon Hargrave, you kidding me? 84 mil, 84 mil to that guy, 40 million guaranteed. Hell yeah, we'll take him. Hell yeah. See what he did against the Niners. See what he did all season. He was the best defensive tackle up for eligibility in free agency. The 49ers snagged him. They will not be outbid. And a defensive line gets even deeper. Bosa, Hargrave, Armstead, Jackson. All these guys now, that's deep. That's deep. And and obviously, 
a lot of people, they went to immediately, well, you know, that kind of signified that they made a mistake a little bit. The Javon Kinlaw uh, draft, getting rid of, trading DeForest Buckner, yeah, that might have been a mistake. But you know what? Kudos to the 49ers, who inadvertently basically admitted their mistake with DeForest Buckner, who's a couple years younger than Hargrave. But they know they made a mistake. But you know what? We don't care about that now. Just go get better. And the 49ers did yesterday. Hi, Hargrave. Goodbye, McGlinchey. He signs a five-year deal with the Denver Broncos worth up to $87.5 million. 50 guaranteed. That is a lot of money. That is what we consider an overpay. But again, based on the market, it's not an overpay exactly. So, Mike, best wishes. Good luck up in Denver. You're going to need it in that division going up against the beasts of the AFC West, the Khalil Max, the Bosa's, the Crosby's, the Joneses, all of those people. So, McGlinchey, goodbye. Hargrave, hello. Jimmy Garoppolo, say it ain't so, Jim. He's gone, folks. We're going to miss him. Jimmy Garoppolo signs a three-year, seventy. it's worth up to $72 million. He's got $33 million guaranteed at signing, and it's a total guaranteed of $45 million and an average of $24.250 million per year. James, and it's basically, you know, they have a potential out after one year. It's kind of a one-year, two-year. Let's see what we got. You'd expect the Raiders to do a draft pick. That would be a quarterback with that seventh overall. Maybe they trade up. You saw the Panthers on Friday of last week trade all the way up to one with the Chicago Bears. So they definitely have their sights set on a quarterback that they like, whether that's Young, whether that's Stroud, we'll see. But we'll worry about that and how it pertains to the Raiders more closer down the draft when all the quarterback carousel will happen. Right now, we're just talking about Jimmy Garoppolo. As we say goodbye to his 49ers tenure, and how are you going to remember Jimmy Garoppolo at 888 957 Nine five seven nine five seven zero. I think it's easy in hindsight right now. And a lot of people, I can see it right now, texting in. He's like, I'm so happy to be done with that guy. Thank God. A lot of hate for him. And here's some right here. 669 from the Xfinity Mobile Text Line. Here's some hate for you. I hate the Raiders, and I hate Jimmy Garoppolo. Match made in heaven. Can't wait to see them flounder. There you go. So there's going to be a lot of people who don't wish well for Jimmy Garoppolo. They're just going to remember what happened in the Super Bowl a few years ago, overshooting Emmanuel Sanders, so close, yet so far, you're going to think of that performance two years ago in the NFC Championship game against the Rams, where he was playing hurt, but didn't play well towards the end there. Night, night, that's all she wrote. You're going to be thinking about those moments. But what about the good moments leading up to that? What about the Saints game, right? What about him coming in and just getting traded to the team and the team going on a winning streak to end the season? What about that, Right? Like, you remember the bad times, obviously, more than the good times. But when it's all said and done, I think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be a symbol of a culture change for the San Francisco 49ers. That's what I'm going to remember him for. He changed the culture. He helped. They weren't legitimate before he came along. They had Brian freaking Hoyer and C.J. Beathard. Like, come on. Really? I know we like to, you know, make Jimmy Garoppolo the punching bag a la Jordan Poole. But he had some good moments. He had some good moments. And I think overall, 49er fans should have a pretty fond memory when it comes to Jimmy Garoppolo. I know it's easy to remember the bad times. It's easy to remember the Super Bowl. It's easy to remember all the injuries he had. That stinks. It's easy to remember his shortcomings, his oh no throws. But be honest, just deep down, Niner fans, just a little bit, you're going to miss him. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. 888-957-9570, 888-957-9570. Joseph Correa, I'm assuming you're Carlos's cousin. How's he doing, by the way, with Minnesota? Uh, the ultimate choker is what he will remember Jimmy Garoppolo for. Fair. I don't think, I mean, he won a lot of big games, too. Was he the best in the playoffs? No, he wasn't. They didn't really let him throw in the playoffs. They didn't let Jimmy, quote-unquote, cook. They ran the ball most of the time. Shanahan didn't trust him until he trusted him late. The Super Bowl couldn't make the throw. Rest is history. Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, 
third and forever. We know the rest. Paul Revere, Jimmy G only cares about the porn stars. Well, I will be honest, Paul Revere. Shout out Beastie Boys. The first thing I thought of when Jimmy Garoppolo signed in Las Vegas was wasn't the fit with Darren Waller, Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, Josh McDaniels, Dave Ziegler, all those guys. I was like, man, Jimmy's going to crush it in Las Vegas. That guy's going to absolutely crush it in Las Vegas. Is there a more perfect match than Jimmy freaking Garoppolo in Las Vegas when it comes to that market? He's got the looks. He's got the million-dollar smile. He's single. He's the bachelor. Going to Las Vegas with all that cash and those looks and that cachet being the quarterback of that team? Whew. God love you, Jimmy. God love you. We're going to take a quick break here. Come on back. We'll react to more of Jimmy Garoppolo, his tenure. How will you remember Jimmy Garoppolo on the San Francisco 49ers? 888 957 9570. 888 957 9570. How are you reacting to the Hargrave signing? That's a big one. Mike McGlinchey is gone. Do you feel like the Niners have done enough to shore up that offensive line when they re signed McKivitz last week? Is he going to be the right tackle? So, Still a lot to get to. Let me know your thoughts on the NFL free agency thus far. Sam Darnold, we'll get into that. Fight on. Does that put a little pressure on Trey Lance? We'll react to all of that more on the other side. This is the pregame show, Joe Spadoni, 95.7 The Game. Fleetwood Windows and Doors. Big.
Welcome back. Pre-game show, Joe Spadoni, 95-7 the game. Warriors 123, Suns 112. Continue to take your calls and texts on that. YouTube, Twitch, up and running. Hello, like, subscribe. Hit me up there. Follow me on Twitter, at Spadoni underscore Joe, for all of your sports takes that you didn't know you needed. And other takes, like Mandalorian, food, uh, other stuff. Way to sell it, Joe. 888-957-9570. Call or text that number. Xfinity mobile text line. We're talking... NFL free agency, talking Warriors. We're talking everything right here on the pregame show. What's hitting you? We're just dissecting that Warriors win as they're heading on to the road now. We're dissecting the career of Jimmy Garoppolo in a 49ers uniform. It looks like that has come to an end. Absolutely, it has. Whether he comes back later on, not sure about that. But right now, as it pertains to him in this future, he's a Las Vegas Raider. Signed a three-year deal with them. He's got 33 Point seven five zero, almost thirty four million guaranteed at signing. It's good work if you can get it. Forty five total guaranteed for him. And I think that's a good value. I think that's a right. You know, you kept hearing the term yesterday. If you're following on Twitter, Twitter, <laughs> free agency. It's a middle class QB market, right? That's like Geno Smith, Jimmy Garoppolo. Like they're not getting that Derek Carr hundred million dollar guaranteed. They're not getting that. They're not that good. They don't stay as healthy, and they haven't shown that quality that a Derek Carr has shown throughout his career. Now, you might say, Spadoni, well, just looking at the winning record with Jimmy Garoppolo and Derek Carr, just look at that. Jimmy's absolutely a better quarterback. Well, the market doesn't agree. GMs around the league don't agree. And I would argue that Derek Carr has been a lot more durable. Probably, it's not even probably, he has a better arm. He has had one of the worst defenses for a guy in his career with the team in the history of the NFL. I can't even think I'm like he's up there with Archie Manning as far as a talented guy who's been just been on a bad team for most of his career. That's Derek Carr. Now he went to the playoffs twice. Didn't get to play in one of them because he broke his leg. We remember that season. That was an MVP caliber type season. Hell, he may have won it if he stayed healthy that year. So listen, I'm not here to debate the Derek Carr, Jimmy Garoppolo stuff anymore. That's going to play itself out this season because you know what? Jimmy's going to have the same hand and same cards that Derek was dealt. He's going to have the same thing in Las Vegas. So we shall see. Does winning cure all? Does it? We'll see. He's going to have a good opportunity to do so with that offense. Darren Waller, Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, Hunter Renfro. Josh McDaniels knows him well. Dave Ziegler knows him well from his New England Patriots days. So he will have weapons. Offensive line? Eh. Not great, but didn't have the best offensive line here in San Francisco at times as well. Can he stay healthy? That's the million-dollar question. He has a, tons of incentives on that, so we shall see. But again, 888-957-9570. How will you remember Jimmy Garoppolo as a San Francisco 49er? On the YouTube chat, PD Bryan, my favorite memories of Jimmy was when the Warrior girls lined up to meet him, when... He hit on Aaron Andrews. I don't know if really know if he hit on her. He just said, feels great, baby, when she asked about the win and missing a wide-open wide receiver in the Super Bowl. There you go. Those are the memories. I mean, I think that kind of encapsulates Jimmy Garoppolo's tenure. But again, you just remember when he first came to the team, it just felt different when he became the quarterback. It felt like the 49ers became relevant again, and they were. He brought some respectability back to that organization that had some fallen on hard times. Chip Kelly, Jim Tom Sula, Shanahan struggling early on. That season was gross. It was not fun. You remember that picture, and everyone does, a young Kyle Shanahan up against, he was in the locker room, he has the game ball, sitting up against, what is it, the, uh, the hamper, if you will, in the locker room, just sitting on the ground, not crisscross, but just kind of his hands folded, holding that football, just looking with that thousand yard stare like, my God, what have I gotten myself into? Jimmy Garoppolo comes. Everything gets, you know, changed. It does. Tears his ACL the year after. That was unfortunate. Come back. He did stay healthy. And then you know what? They go to the Super Bowl. They lose. That stinks. Come back the next year. Injured again. Don't make the playoffs. Come back the year after that. He's hurt, but plays most of the games. They go to the NFC Championship. 
again. They lose again there. And then last year, you know, Trey Lance, he goes down. Then Jimmy, after that Bronco game, and after they acquired Christian McCaffrey, they started to let Jimmy cook a little more. He started to look like that old Jimmy. Now you can point to that Saints game. That was that. Saints have a hell of a defense. That was a defensive struggle for the most part. Give Dennis Allen and that team credit. They played well. 49ers did their job on defense. Didn't let Andy Dalton do a thing. And you know what? Jimmy Garoppolo, after that, he was looking better. And then, you know, the Miami game happened. And that was all she wrote for his 49ers tenure. So how will you remember Jimmy Garoppolo? 888-957-9570. Another quarterback move that is sure to pique the interest of 49ers fans is Sam Darnold signing a one-year deal. Well, hasn't signed it yet. Agreed to terms. Sorry, everyone. Captain Stickler's over here. Doesn't officially be able to sign until tomorrow when the NFL free agency period officially begins. Legal tampering, it's dumb. Like, why don't they just call it a the negotiation period or whatever? Like, I don't know why they have to call it legal tampering because that, by definition, doesn't really make sense. Isn't tampering, by definition, like, not legal? So, anyways, just kind of pisses me off. I'm just going to be honest, that terminology. But Sam Darnold, fight on, USC quarterback, former First round pick, Carolina Panther, New York Jet. We get all that. He signs a one year deal with the team. Now, that's interesting because I think a lot of us were waiting to see what the 49ers would do. And they said, John Lynch spoke about it at the presser, that they were looking to bring in a veteran, you know, to back up Trey, Brock. This signals to me, at least to me, and let me know how it feels to you at 888 957 9570, that they don't think Brock's going to be ready week one. Now, they said after three months that he can start throwing again. That's just throwing. But he has to ramp his arm back up. Three months away, obviously. That's in June. So we'll see then. A couple months before start of training camp. All that sort of stuff. So we shall see how ready Brock is to go. But this signals to me, at least, Sam Darnold is a capable quarterback. He could win you games. We saw it in Carolina last year. We saw his connection with DJ Moore. Hell, my fantasy team saw it. Thank God Sam Darnold came in late. I mean, it was kind of too little too late. Because my season just came to a crashing halt because uh, <coughs> Justin Herbert just couldn't get it done for me on the fantasy end. But you saw what Sam Darnold could do. He could win. He can win some games. Now, is he going to win a lot of them? Probably not. He's going to see ghosts. We get all that. You remember that meme. But he is a good enough talent to, I think, you know, create a narrative, if you will. And I could see it happening now. Sam Darnold should be the starter. You know, Sam Darnold... By all reports, just look at that arm. Look at that accuracy in training camp. You know, this guy was a former first-round quarterback. This guy's a USC talent. This guy, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, if I'm doing my best, Whitey Gleason doing Pete Carroll, this guy could be a starter. Now, I still think it's Trey Lance's job to lose, but I think a majority of the 49ers fan base, and let me know if I'm wrong here, at 888-957-9570, looked at this move of signing Sam Darnold as, you know what? This guy can push Trey for the starting job. This guy's here to push Trey. We didn't sign your Nate Sudfelds. You know, we didn't sign, you know, Mr. Chase Daniel, something like that. No. We signed Sam Darnold. Not the best quarterback, but not the worst. He can win you games. Absolutely, we've seen it. So this is a very interesting move, and I'm very interested and fascinated to see how this is going to develop heading towards training camp because I still think it is Trey's team to lose come training camp, come week one, come OTAs, and I'm sure Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch are going to give him every single opportunity to win that starting job, but they're also kind of hinting to Trey here like, hey, Trey, we like you. I think you're really good, but we want to see more. We want to see you stay healthy. We want a little creative tension in the quarterback room, if you will. And that's where we're bringing in Sam Darnold. And what was the narrative around Sam Darnold? You know, if you just get him into a Kyle Shanahan offense, well, he's got one now. He's got one now. So 888-957-9570-888-957-9570. Sam Darnold, your thoughts. It's just been a crazy day. It was a crazy day yesterday, NFL free agency. All the different narratives. Jimmy Garoppolo going to Vegas. Sam Darnold coming here. It all started with the Hargrave signing. Javon Hargrave coming over from the Philadelphia Eagles. Mike McGlinchey says goodbye. So a lot of moves 
as it pertains to the 49ers going down yesterday. And again, these are the days you live for, for Sports Talk Radio. And we're going to be discussing all of this right here, 95-7 the game, don't go anywhere, any single news that's happening. And the 49ers, as all reports indicated, are not done yet. Stuff is going to still trickle down, and we will have all that breaking news right here on 95-7 the game. Locked and loaded, morning roast, 6-10. to 10. Steiny Goo, 10-2. to 2. Willard Dibbs, 2-6. to 6. Don't go anywhere. This is the pregame show with Joe Spadoni, 888-957-9570. we got one more segment, the cross Joe coming up next. I cannot wait to pick Joe Shasky's brain as it pertains to the Sam Darnold signing, Jimmy Garoppolo memories, Hargrave, all that sort of stuff. So, again, hit me up on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, at Spadoni underscore Joe. Give me a like, give me a follow. This is the pregame show, Joe Spadoni. Come on back. One more segment, 95-7 the game. Uncle, Kate's going to leave me, and I need your advice. What's the problem, John? She thinks I'm cheating on her, but I'm not. It's just that I have ED now, and I don't know why. Don't worry. The same thing happened to me. All men lose testosterone with age, and this can cause ED. I went to Balanced Medical Solutions, and they helped me rebalance my hormones.
seven, the game. Welcome back. Pre-game show, Joe Spadoni, 95-7 the game. One more segment here before tossing it over to Bonte Hill. And this guy is joining me now for the crossover, Joe Shasky. We continue to react to the Warriors' big win over the Phoenix Suns, 123-112 to last night. All the free agency news coming down. Taylor Heineke, he signs a two-year, $20 million deal with the Atlanta Falcons. Alan Lazard looks like he's going to sign with the Jets. Does that link Aaron Rodgers more? Obviously, Lazard, former Green Bay Packer, now going to the Jets, Rodgers, all that sort of stuff. Maybe, maybe not. Jeremy Fowler of ESPN said did, they just like him anyways. Joe, go ahead. No, did I tell you? What? Aaron Rodgers? Oh, he must be related to my wife. Indecisions. Oh, boy. Hey, hey, where do you want to eat? Oh, that's, I don't know. That's the ultimate. What do where you want? do you want to go? Uh, what about some Mexican? Yeah, we had Mexican. I just had Mexican two days ago. You can have it every day. What about sushi, hun? <sighs> uh, me and my friends are going to get sushi a day from now. <laughs> It, it, Joe, I do the checklist every single, and then we narrow it all the way down to exactly what she wanted. There's to eat certain the whole time. foods you can eat every day. Mexican and Italian are 100%. two of them. I can have that every single meal if I want to. Can I also you want throw pasta? A, get have pasta. You want meat? You can get the meat. You want a burrito? Have a burrito. If you want a salad? Get a salad. There you Me- go. It's Mexican, easy. I can eat every day. Yes, a hundred percent. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, definitely Italian. Yes, but the problem with Italian, it does. You, there are times where you want like okay. I'm pasta out. Like, I, yes. there are times that I, I mean, this is a guy who grew up on buttered noodles at my household with chicken and broccoli gotcha. every yes, single day. Gotcha. The cheapest possible meal. Um, Chinese food? Could you eat Chinese food? I, I think I could. Authentic, like legit Chinese yeah. food where they got like the secret menus and all the legit menus yeah. like the locals like get? Like the general yes. or kung pao type totally. of chicken. Like totally. I can have a cashew chicken with, with rice Ooh. every day. Some duck sounds great right about now. <sighs> I can have, oh, so good. See, Joey, we have very similar, uh, <laughs> you know, palates. Come on, man. Talking to the Paisan over here, all right? <laughs> Very I don't refined palate. It just comes with the na- with the vowel at the end of my last name. Uh, Chasky, obviously, Warriors big one yesterday. This is a great win. Could, yeah. So, Clay Thompson, he's just been on, he's just been on terror the last yeah. couple of months. He's yeah. been. It's good to see Jordan Poole finally, and, yeah. we'll, and we'll get into the free agency stuff. Don't worry, folks. But we just need to touch on this Warriors win because they go on a five game road trip, and this is going to tell us a lot about the Warriors down the stretch here. This is going to tell us everything I think about where this team is because he got some momentum that. Felt like they turned a corner. We've said this every single time this year. That win in overtime <laughs> felt like they turned a corner, uh-huh. and they backed it up with the win yesterday. Can they take it on the road? Yeah. Clippers, Grizzlies, Hawks. These aren't easy opponents. I think earlier this year, that's a game that they blow. Yeah, it felt like that, right? right? Yes. And, and, and so, to me, this was an encouraging step forward. I'm not going to sit here and say it's the win of the year, although the vibes feel like they're the best they've been all year. Like, they feel yeah. really good right now, and this team's um, it's having a lot of fun. Seeing Clay Thompson explode simultaneously with Steph Curry, we were all waiting for that. Like, we've been all waiting for that to happen. And then Jordan Poole's end of the third quarter, start of the fourth quarter, thought it was really, really well. Uh, he did a really, really good job, you know, attacking the rim, finishing with the left and right hand, Iggy with the the acrobatic finish, um, and then JP hitting some some big time shots down the stretch. I think collectively they needed that win, and then obviously there's the the, the standings element. Like I can't ignore yeah. it. Phoenix was ahead of you by multiple games. I think it was two and a half before last night, and so you needed that type of a game to creep up into. <laughs> If they find a way to get the fourth seed, to get into the top four after everything that's happened, be wild, be wild. They are they're only two back of the loss column right now. Ah. It's just crazy how the things move. You had the Lakers who were the eleventh yesterday, and now even, they even play yesterday, and now they're the ninth. Like there's all this mixing and matching parks, and it's going to be so fun these last couple weeks to watch as it pertains to the Golden State Warriors and just around the league. Like you can go from matchup like right now. You got what is it the four or five? You got the Suns. Like the Suns and the Warriors are playing each other right now. In the I first want to round. avoid that matchup. Kevin Durant, Early. first game at Chase Center potentially being in yeah. a playoff game would be nuts. Like, well, that would be so crazy, right? And then I think Bonte and you were talking about is like, would he get booed in a playoff game? Probably. It, like, felt, <laughs> it felt like watching Phoenix yesterday, um, obviously no Durant is a direct effect on their yeah, depth and they, all that they, other that's stuff. That's exactly like, what it is. No yeah. Mikhail Bridges, you instantly saw 
they both guys go off. In so much more of, comfortable. Yeah. Right? Oh my yeah. God. Yep. Totally different. And I'm not here to say like, oh, Mikel Bridges is just the kryptonite to Steph Curry. Like eventually Steph would have figured him out to some degree. But like Mikel Bridges has made him work way too hard. Yes. And I felt like that was not a problem early on. And they, for the first time in a long time, that first quarter, not only was it an offensive explosion, there was complimentary defense. Yes. And I think that's the big takeaway. We could talk about, you know, Phoenix fighting back and them holding them off. The complimentary defense to go with the explosive offense early on, that was the most encouraging. Yes, and you're going to let Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton get theirs. Absolutely. Like, that's fine. But when you have Torrey Craig getting two points, Damian Lee, who got cooked by Jordan Poole multiple times to the point where he got to get benched, and Sonia was yelling at the bench, Steph's mom, like, Go easy on the guy over there. That's that's my son-in-law, right? What happened with him and JMG at the end of the game? It I, felt very petty. Uh, was, uh, yeah. I thought that JMG overreacted. Maybe, maybe I'm misinterpreting yeah. it. Maybe I'm I'm I like Damian Lee too much. I don't know, but I felt like he totally went over the top. I don't know what that was about. Very it was, weird, it was very right? very weird. But going back to the point, it's JMG's like he's playing quietly good basketball. Quietly, let's. let's, let's well, couple, he had 18 on Saturday he did. night. Couple, that block on book was sick. Hey, maybe he's getting hot at the right time. I, who know, who knows? He's right? comfortable. He's comfortable. That's exactly, and that's a word you haven't been able to use when it pertains to the yes, Golden State Warriors. Good point. As it pertains to the 49ers, they were very comfortable letting Mike McGlinchey walk, Jimmy Garoppolo walk, Sam Darnold fight on, Hargrave come over here. Yeah. yeah. Where do you want to start, Shasky? Because it felt like after the Hargrave signing, that was the first big one, right? $40 million guaranteed. You get the best D-tackle on the market. Feels like an afterthought. You know what I was How th- crazy is that? It really does. I mean, he's a stud. And he's I was beast. looking at lots of different video. You know, when anybody chops up all the video of someone's highlights, like, guys look ridiculous. They look like Superman. But, like, this guy can line up on the inside. He he can line up slightly on the outside. I think him alongside Eric Armstead is going to be really nice. Him alongside Bosa. They can run some stunt action. This looks like a guy, short area quickness, rhino power. And then the closeout speed. Like, that was the one area, like, I'm not the biggest Eric Armstead fan. I understand the value that he brings to the table. I don't love slow prodding defensive linemen. I like the short area burst guys. This dude's that he's he, he's got that explosion, and I love the way he closes out on guys and he hits the quarterback. I think he's going to have a really really good time this year with this team, and I love this investment. I was thinking about it this way, Joey, as you bid adieu to Mike McGlinchey. Isn't it kind of crazy when we go back to the beginning? Like how how are the Niners going to get good? I just assumed that, like, okay, they're going to have to draft really, really well in the first couple of of, of uh, rounds. And really, outside of Debo and Ayuk and Bosa, Bosa's a big one, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. And I'm not, and, and those are huge ones. Yes, think of how many early picks they really haven't gotten a lot of production out of. Yeah, Solomon Thomas, obviously, Ruben. Kinlaw. You know, they traded a second-round yeah. pick for D. Ford. They traded a second-round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, th- they squeezed those, those two yes. deals. But, like, McGlinchey, Kinlaw. And you, you remember, going back to McGlinchey, that was a coin flip with I them know. and the Raiders. And then it ended up and being— Trey Lance. And then Trey, Trey Lance sneakily. Like, I'm, I'm just saying, like, no. I, now, McGlinchey played a lot for them. I know he had the one injury where I think his season was cut short in, like, week 10 or 11. Yeah. But— like, you would have thought their first-round picks would pop more, but then you look at it and you go, oh, Kittle, fifth round. Warner, Hufanga. Like, the majority of their great picks have either been trades to get good players, Trent Williams, Christian McCaffrey, et cetera, or, or they've nailed some of these later on. They haven't really hit grand slams in the first round. And when you hit, when you get all pros later, it makes those first rounders 100%. like, whatever. whatever. By the way, the YouTube chat, what's even that baseball, buddy? Are you Mike Kruko over here 2.0? Does, I, it help, I just, does it help you think? I've right? got nervous energy. <laughs> I got nervous energy. I've got I, nervous energy. I don't want to piss you off. Just chuck no, that no. thing at me. That's you know, what it feels like a little it's my bit. Stress ball. It's your stress ball. I got you. Oh uh, no! Are they making fun of me? No, no, no. People are just talking about this is shit on the YouTube chat. It's asking that damn baseball from Jason Mishler on the YouTube chat. Uh, did you get to play yesterday? By the way, as we talk a little baseball, well, we had little league practice. Okay, which is great. And then like around uh, I don't know the end of practice because it didn't rain, and now it's gonna be raining all day. It looks <laughs> like yeah. I know, I, I know. My you games hate are going to get canceled. Oh, I'm boy. so disappointed. Oh, boy. I'm just, it makes me sad, dude. The rain makes me sad. And today I was driving so slow coming in because it's lot very of dangerous. Yeah, a lot of puddles out there. Be and safe then, if you're driving in and listening right now. And then like the, the freeways, like at this point, I've given up on trying to criticize Caltrans. They can't keep up with the amount. The amount of rain we've taken to our roadways 
it's impossible for these crews to fix all the potholes. So drive slow. Like I went into a huge pothole today, probably ruined my my rim or whatever. Yeah, I hate that. Yeah, yeah. you can't even see it coming. No, no, you can't. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, we say goodbye, Shask. I know you and Bonte are going to have a I whole thing on this. I can, and actually, I don't hate it. I told you guys, if the price was right, <laughs> I'm not going to hate it. Now, I will hate it as, as from a Raider fan perspective. I will hate it if they don't do anything else. Like, you have to draft a quarterback now. 100%. If they go into this season, you get rid of Derek Carr, and you just bring in Jimmy Garoppolo, and you don't get a young guy, then it's an unmitigated disaster. Like, I'm sorry, you cannot count on Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm expecting this guy to play well for six games, and he's gone. Like, he's going to be hurt. Wow. Like, that's just, like, that's how I've I been, know. I've been watching him his whole career. That's what happens. Well, as a Raider and he's fan. Got, I, and, and, and sorry, not to cut you off. Yeah. He's got a great, like, cast of weapons. Like, let's not oh. get it twisted. He's got Josh Jacobs. No doubt. Best running back Waller. in the league last year. He's got Darren Waller, one of the top tight ends. He's got Devontae Adams, all pro. Yeah. Like, he's got two of the best at their position players. And three, if you want to go there, Hunter Renfro's less nice complimentary. Like Moreau? Foster Moore, he's a free agent. Maybe he, I, I Niners love- might. I would love to bring him in. Oh, I like him. He's really good. Am too. I tripping on that? No, no, he's really good. He's a yeah. great number two, and you already have Kittle. Like, he'd yeah. be a great setup there. So, yeah, they've got pieces there. Offensive line's okay, shaky at times. Colt Miller, he's pretty good. So, they got to, and then you got the ties to McDaniels, obviously, is why they brought them in. So, he's got weapons. I just can't count on that guy staying healthy. And that is ultimately why the 49ers moved off of him. Now, goodbye, Jimmy Garoppolo. Hello, Sam Darnold. <laughs> Fight on Joe Shasky. That's interesting because. You feel like Darnold's just, and I know you don't like him, I feel personally he's just good enough that you can create a narrative that maybe this guy can push to be starter I week know. one if Brock Purdy did is going to be out. Did you see the tweet I put out yesterday? I did. Okay. And I've got like 90 responses. I was very surprised on the responses. Put your boy but, 415 if we can follow you. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter about following me on Twitter. Come on now. We got to plug it. It was, more, it was more me. This is what I was saying. When you see the Sam Darnold signing as a Niner fan, do you interpret that as they have faith in Brock or Trey or both of them? Yeah. Or do you see that they don't have faith in them? And the responses were all over the map. Some people saying, like, this is a guy who's going to compete for the starting job. That's what I, I think. That's wild. That's what I think. Yeah. Some people think that this is a reclamation project, which I would file this under reclamation project. Quote, unquote, veteran, but obviously has a lot that he needs to have worked on. It's a Farhan special. Yes, that's a <laughs> wow. You are this is Kevin Gosman on line one. No, but like, I, I as a player, I'm not a huge Sam Darnold fan. I, I don't think he sees the field well. I'm not going to go ghosts on you. Yeah, uh, seeing ghosts. I think his mechanics are sloppy. Uh, I've never thought he's been a good decision maker. Now I'm judging the majority of this by a lot of the stuff I saw in USC because I didn't like him coming out. I thought he had poor coaching and he looked like a guy who at times relied on his athleticism too much, and he's not even that great of an athlete and makes poor decisions when scrambling out of the pocket, throwing across the field. And the flip side of all that would be, yeah, the coaching. And Adam Adam Gase, like Matt Rule. Go, go back to his college days. I mean, they were terrible. Uh, Clay Helton? Uh, yeah, like, terrible. come on. Like, well, horror. And, and, thing. He's wildly inaccurate. No yes. one ever says, we never do this, okay? We, we do it for Trey Lance. <laughs> Sam, don't, watch the games. Wildly inaccurate. But the Wide arm, open guy. Let me just throw him into a hit. But the arm, Shasky, he's got a great arm, is what they always say. And you know what the narrative around Sam Darnold's whole career was? And everyone's talking about Twitter yesterday. If you just got him in Kyle Shanahan's system. So we will see there. That's Joe Shasky. Uh, he's coming up next with Bontail. Cannot wait for all the free agency breakdown. We will keep you live and local all day right here in the 95-7 game as it pertains to the NFL free agency. Warriors, they get a big win over the Phoenix Suns, 123-112. to Morning Rose coming up next. Joe Chasky, Bonte Hill. This was the pregame show with Joe Spadoni, 95-7 the game. You're listening to 95-7 the game, KGMC-FM at HD1 San Francisco. An Odyssey station. Investing is confusing. Dawn raids, triple witching hour, candlesticks, crown jewels, bears, bulls, bear hugs, blue chips. It's one big word salad of uncertainty. Fortunately, Fremont Bank now has incredible rates on their savings account.